Welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. And today I'm sitting down with Lacey Chabert to talk about her new Hallmark movie, The Crossword Mysteries, A Puzzle to Die For. The story follows New York Sentinel Crosswords editor, Tess Harper, as she becomes involved in a murder mystery after discovering that a crime is foreshadowed by clues in one of her newspaper's weekly puzzles. Take a look. Honor homicide. Tess here is our crossword puzzle editor. I can look at a puzzle and figure out who this is. Everywhere! Is this the murder weapon? You always the snow ski. I think there are clues to the crime in this puzzle. Test the wall, this is not a puzzle. Please help me welcome Lacey Chabert. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hi. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. I love having you here. And obviously, I love you on Hallmark. You've, you've done so many fun films. How do you get these scripts to you? Or how do you choose which ones? Because there's all these different kind of roles you've taken on. Oh, thank you so much for that. Yeah, this was my 17th Hallmark movie. But it's the first time I've um, done a mystery wheel with them for the Hallmark movies and Mystery Channel. Um, so I was really excited to do something different. You know, I've done a lot of Christmas movies, which I love and will continue to do. And, you know, the romances and love stories. But this one's a little darker, a little more serious. Um, I get to uh, my co-star, Brendan Elliott. This is our fifth movie together. And we were, we love collaborating. He's so funny and such a wonderful actor. So it was fun for us to do something in, you know, a, a different genre. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, uh, the love part is really secondary in this one because Tess, yeah. we're really focusing in on her intelligence and how locked in she is. So how fun was that to play that where it's not just a love story. She's like this really robust character. Right. Well, it's not romance that's bringing yeah. them together. Yeah. It's really their, um, it's their brains, so to speak. Um, he's kind of reluctant to let her be involved in the case, but she sort of pushes her way in and he can't deny the fact that she's actually being very helpful. And he's help, you know, helping him see how the clues are being used to foreshadow what's happening. And uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to play. It was uh, co-created by Will Shorts, who obviously is the New York Times um, you know, uh, crossword editor and writer. And meeting him was so, so exciting, kind of intimidating. Yeah. He's so incredibly intelligent. And my character is sort of inspired by him. Yeah. Do you do crosswords? Um, I do. I look. I'm. I'm not an expert. I'm <laughs> not going to lie about it. <laughs> I do them in pencil because <laughs> I have to change the answers often. Um, and I've definitely become more curious about them since doing this yeah. and being involved in this project. And and this is something that's going to continue. Um, we're we're about to start shooting three more movies, okay. and then those will air in October. So the first one's premiering next uh, this Sunday, mm -hmm. this Sunday night. But we're excited for the story to continue. And they are standalone movies. Um, but it'll, you know, there are a series of movies. Yeah, let's talk about working with Will because I am a huge crossword puzzle and he's like an icon. Oh, um, the icon. <laughs> so tell me, what is he like in person? Is he really that smart? Because it he's, takes a, a special brain to come up with crossword puzzles. Yes, he is incredibly intelligent. He's really actually kind of soft spoken, really lovely and kind. And he has this thing where he plays ping pong every single day. And he has a ping pong streak that's <laughs> it's going on over 2,000 days. I don't know exactly how many. Wow. So the day that he was on Toronto, um, in Toronto on set with us, he was going to you know, be in a small scene, have a small cameo. And we had him playing ping pong in the back of the scene just to keep the record going. I'll have to go back and rewatch. Yeah, we didn't want to break his streak. <laughs> like, if, <laughs> if you're going to come visit set, you definitely need to play. But he's lovely, and I can't wait to spend more time with him. Is there anything interesting you learned about crossword puzzles doing this movie? Because I love the dialogue um, in this movie. There's so many little, like, crossword jokes. Like, oh, you're like a Saturday puzzle. Or you're like, and only people who do crossword puzzles will probably get it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I like those little inside jokes where, yeah, my character is kind of deciding how she feels about Brennan's character. <laughs> And, you know, he's coming around, and so she sort of constantly refers to him as a puzzle. And it's kind of an inside joke, but also it's well explained. And uh, you and Brendan have been referred to as, like, the Tracy and Hepburn of the Hallmark <laughs> Channel, which is such a huge compliment, but it's That's so true. You have this compliment. chemistry, and like you said, it's your fifth film together. So what do you yeah. think is what makes it work? Well, that's a crazy high compliment <laughs> and very, very kind to whoever said that. Um, you know, it just works. We're real friends in real life. We trust each other, which is hard to come by. And our families are friends. And when you trust your scene partner, it, it makes you a little more willing to try stuff and feel like it's safe to, you know, improv and say, hey, can we, can we, can we collaborate on this and try this little thing? If it works, it's awesome. If it doesn't, well, you keep moving on. Yeah. But we make each other laugh. Um, I'm sure we drive each other a little crazy, too, at this point. But he's just a wonderful, wonderful scene partner. What does he do that drives you crazy? 
Um, <laughs> oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, he loves to improv, which I also love, but I always kind of give him a hard time that he just has to have the last word. So we'll just keep improv and it'll be like, okay, we're done. And then he has to throw something else in. And I'll be like, Brennan, in scene, over. <laughs> How did you guys approach this movie differently? Because the previous movies were all, you know, the about the heart and love uh, and being in a relationship and getting married. In this one, you guys are sort of like going back and forth and he's slight, he's slightly antagonistic. He's like, doesn't quite believe your character, which sometimes annoyed me. It was kind of difficult at yeah. first because we had just finished the All of My Heart wedding movie like a week before this started filming. Wow. So we were doing this movie, which is about the pinnacle of these characters' love and getting married and, you know, just used to playing characters that looked at each other like that. And then all of a sudden we had to act like we were strangers. Yeah. And it was, we had to kind of keep catching ourselves because we also are friends in real life that, you know, these characters are not familiar with each other. They, they really have to listen when each other speaks and, um, you know, they don't know each other yet. So it was an adjustment yeah. at first, but... We had a we had great fun with. It. I can't wait to start again. Do you have any uh, rituals you do before action, just to sort of get in the right headspace or prepare for a scene? Um, lots of crosswords, just <laughs> all the crosswords. Um, no, I mean I, no, I mean being prepared, of course, is the most important thing. And then I think you're so I'm such a better actor when I'm just relaxed and just really listening. So I always try and make eye contact with the person who's in the scene with me and and just listen. Yeah, There's really yeah. Um, this movie is also filmed in New York, and there's a lot of like walking outside scenes. What was that like? Because I'm always, it always seems like another variable you got to think about filming in the city. Well, yeah, movie magic. It was actually in Toronto. Was it? <laughs> there you go. I hope that we'll be able to come to New York at some point during the series. I really hope so because I love it here, and it would be so much fun to film here. But we were in Toronto and um, an area of northern Ontario called North Bay, and it was. Uh, yeah, it's different filming in a busy city, yeah. you know, where only parts of the streets are locked down and blocked. And it's, you just kind of have to go with what, like, right now, there's a <laughs> siren and you just have to keep going. Exactly. So it was a lot, it was definitely more complicated, but. I, mean, I don't even hear the sirens anymore. <laughs> Sadly. I should probably go to an ear doctor or something. Hopefully everyone's okay. Um, so you found this home on Mar oh, uh, Hallmark. What does that mean for you? Because it does seem like just such a good fit and you get to explore all these different characters and all these different stories it really seems like a blessing it really is a blessing um i've been working for them for many years and like you said i did 17 movies and and um uh they're just lovely they're lovely to work for and you know much as the same as their values are in the movies yeah. they um you know produce they are very much that as a company yeah. and i i love meeting fans who say you know what i i appreciate that i can sit down with my family and know that it's going to be family friendly and have a happy ending yeah. and I think now more than ever it's people just want to feel good I was gonna I'm say all the movies are so positive and it is really rare to not watch something in it for it to like make you mad like when you watch these Hallmark <laughs> movies you do end up feeling good and you can do it like you said as a family yeah and you hope that the characters are relatable yeah you know and I think a lot of the stories that they tell and the characters that they um, create are things that people can relate to and see part of themselves in yeah. So I think that's part of um, the reason for their success. And and now as a mom, I have a two-year-old. Um, I am even more thankful for that opportunity. And, you know, the movies typically film in three weeks, which is fast and furious and long days. And you just, you know, work, 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 work. But you tell the story the best you can. And then yeah. I enjoy that I'm able to move on to the next one. Yeah. Is there something you look for in the characters you take on? Something that really always jumps out at, in a script for you? Um, I like when... There's comedy to be had in it. Yeah. You know, I obviously love the more tender and sweet moments as well, but I love when the character's a little feisty and, you know, has some spunk. Or um, I always try and just find part of myself in it so I know that I can bring my real authentic self to whatever I'm whatever story I'm telling. Um, but it has to connect to my heart, too. If there's not that heart connection for me in a story where I can find something that just moves me, then I, I usually typically try not to be a part of it because I just don't feel like I'll be able to sell it as well. That's good. In what ways are you then like Tess? Um, I'm very curious. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm from Mississippi. I'm a Southern girl mm -hmm. at heart. But I did live in the city. We moved here when I was seven. Mm -hmm. And I was working as a child actor. And living in New York was so exciting and so different than where I had been raised. And I loved it. And I just remember, you know, always asking lots of questions and mm -hmm. wanting to meet different types of people and understand different walks of life. And I think I'm very much like that Um 
I consider myself a little bit of an investigator. Okay. <laughs> I, I usually pick up on when something's happening around me, so yeah. I'm kind of hard to surprise, and she's very much like that. Do you watch a lot of mystery sort of whodunit kind of shows? I, I do, yes, yeah. I do, and I've watched a lot of the ones that Hallmark has done. <laughs> they have some great series. Um, but yeah, I watch a lot of it. I also watch a lot of, like, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse right now because my daughter's too. That's where you're at. <laughs> yeah. Peppa Pig. A lot of Dora. Anybody have little kids in here? No. <laughs> okay. But I still watch Peppa Pig. Is that okay? Oh, Peppa Pig is it's adorable. It's great. I love that show. I and have I, a fake I, accent because of it. I know, right? No. <laughs> I, I, I'm like singing this song in my head now as you say it. And I do voiceover work too. And so it's really funny because my daughter will watch something that I've done and she goes, oh, mama's voice. Aww. And this week she said, not your face, just your voice. Oh, that's so cute that she can pick that out. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you've been acting since you were a kid. And um, we're seeing all these 90s reboots come back. Yeah. Has there been any talk to bring back Party of Five or like to see where those characters are? It's happening. Yeah, they are bringing back the show. Um, it's going to be with a new family. Okay. And it's a different take on the show, but with a similar theme. And the original creators and writers are are doing that. So I'm sure it'll be amazing because they were so talented. That was something too um, that I realize now as I've, you know, I'm older, I've gotten away from it. It's, it was so well written yeah. and that's not every day. That was such a blessing to be on a show that was so well written. Yeah. So it, look, if they ever asked me to do a cameo or something, I'd love to. Yeah. It was a huge part of my life. I think we would love it too. You're all your fans who've been following you. I mean, just like a little <laughs> cameo, why not? And the cast, I mean, they're, they're family to me. Yeah. I, t I talk to many of them often, and it's nice that we've, um, you know, lived out our lives and kept in touch and had families, and it's fun to see how people grow and change, and it'll always be a huge part of who I was, though. Yeah. I think it's, it'll be a huge part for so many people, which is why I'm glad that they're going to do a reboot, yeah. because it's just, like, the values in that show and everything. Again, I think it's good to re be reminded of those things, especially now. Yeah. Um, well, I know our audience has a couple of questions for okay. you. So who do we have first? Hey, Lindsay. Um, congratulations up to uh, two of your children. Um, I have a nephew myself. Um, Aww. yeah. Um, uh, it's been 15 years since uh, Mean Girls has been released, and I was wondering, um, are we gonna see like a Mean Girls reunion? Because uh, like <laughs> that that movie is one of the funniest team movies of all time. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Um, I have to co-sign that. <laughs> thank you. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know if there ever will be a reunion or a second movie. But um, I actually just saw the musical last night. It was so good. I was so impressed. It, it was. It was just. It was very moving, actually, and really funny. Everyone's so talented in it. Um, playing Gretchen was one of my. That was definitely one of my favorite characters I've ever played. So if there was the opportunity to revisit her, I definitely would. How often do fans come up, up and ask if your hair is full of secrets? Every day. Yeah, I was going to say, like... <laughs> and it is, it is kind of big today. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little I mean, you're a secret. Southern girl, so that's like, why not? Yeah, I posted a picture on Instagram not too long ago, and it was like, I think I said, yeah, it was full of secrets from the beginning. I mean, my hair, just big hair. <laughs> the higher it is, the closer to God is that's what it right. is? That's right. It's very Southern. <laughs> um, either way, though, it must be just cool to be something that has continued to impact oh culture gosh. in the way that Mean Girls has. I mean, yeah. honestly, you see the Ariana Grande video. Yeah. You see the Broadway. I mean, it was something just personally that impacted my life so greatly. So I just love the staying power of it. Thank you. And you never know. I really yeah. appreciate that. You know, every job you take, you don't know how it's going to resonate with people. Tina had obviously written an amazing script, the most talented woman. Mark Waters is an incredible director, awesome cast. We made each other laugh every single day, but you never know. I, we, if you had told me back then, hey, this movie will be, you'll be talking about this 15 years from now. I, you, you can't ever guess. And it holds up, guys. Let's all go watch it <laughs> after this. I mean, and one more question. Hey, Lacey. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, so 17 movies, it's a lot. This Christmas season, or holiday season, I should say, was more like the Hallmark season. <laughs> um, and I've noticed in a lot of your movies, there's always a fantastic baking montage <laughs> of, the, of the cookies. Oh. And I was wondering, since we see you do it so much, we made it part of our holiday traditions. And I was just wondering how much of that is you or how much is written. And I know there's maybe some improv, some B-roll, just making cookies. So I was wondering how much of making cookies is Lacey and how much is it the writer saying they should make some holiday cookies? That is so sweet. Thank you. I love that it's become a tradition for your family. Um, I love to bake. 
I absolutely love to bake. I always have. So it is a part of my life. It's I find it very therapeutic, and it's something now that I do with Julia, my daughter. Um, it's kind of a little bit of a coincidence that it kind of seems to be in a lot of the Hallmark movies. <laughs> but it just it's, fits in perfectly because it's just a festive thing to do around the holidays. But part of, yeah, part of the reason is I, I really do love to bake. And the last one I just did, it wasn't Christmas, but Love, Romance, and Chocolate, it just aired. We filmed in Belgium, and it was all about learning how to make chocolate. So we ate chocolate yeah. the entire movie. Research. And I wasn't complaining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, research. But um, thanks for watching. But what does that mean? I mean, like, we were just talking about Hallmark films being such a good family experience, and then here we are. Like, how cool is that? It's so cool because it really does. I genuinely mean this. It means a lot to me because, you know, growing up, there were the certain movies that around the holidays my family got together and watched, and now whenever I see that movie or we play it, like, I just know it's Christmas time. So the thought that maybe I'm in a movie that becomes that for a family, that, that means a lot to me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, guys, I got to check out this movie, and I love it. If you want to watch Crossword Mysteries, A Puzzle to Die For, you can check it out on Sunday, March 10th at 9 p.m. Eastern on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, the sister network to the Hallmark Channel. Give it up for Lacey Chabert. Thank you so much. <laughs>